So um, it was great with great pleasure that I welcome Professor Liang Yin Chu. Um, he received his BSc and MSc from Chengdu University of Science and Technology, which is currently uh, Sichuan University. U University. Uh, he got his PhD in 1995 from Northeastern University. He's done many types of research fellowships, so University of Tokyo. Tokyo. Uh, he's been a visiting scholar at Harvard University in 2007 and e ESPCI uh, Paris Tech and also at the University of Birmingham. Uh, he was a distinct, distinguished young uh, scholar uh, issued by the National, National Natural Science Foundation of China. These are all different terms than what I'm used to the Australian ones. A distinguished professor of the Chang Zhang Scholars Program issued by the Ministry of Education of China and he's a fellow of the Royal uh, Society. He's got lots of interests, smart materials, functional materials, microfluidics, my favourite too, uh, mass transfer and separations. Please welcome uh, Professor Achu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, thanks a lot to the chairman for, for your kind inviting. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to be here to uh, share my uh, research with you. Uh, I think now uh, people should enjoy lunch, but you face your lunch so fast. I thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, my topic is about uh, smart gating memory. So uh, I'm from Sichuan University. Sichuan University is located in Chengdu, which is uh, southwest China. So later I will. Uh, introduce more about Sichuan uh, in the uh, closing ceremony to, uh, tomorrow. So uh, please pay attention to my talk to tomorrow. <laughs> okay, my group is uh, in a school of chemical engineering. Uh, we are working on memory science, memory materials and technology, and the controlled system, controlled unit systems, and microfluidics, mass transfer and separation and so on. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, smart gating memories which is very inspired. Uh, actually nowadays, uh, here we have a lot of uh, experts in the memory field. Nowadays we are living in a memory world. You can see the membranes are applied in many, many fields including uh, all of the world, I think, uh, from day, day life to the uh, high-tech technology. So, so, but up to now, I think most, almost all, now commercialized membranes <laughs> are single functional membranes, including all of these. They are, uh, the, the substances are separated by size, by uh, solution diffusion difference, by the uh, uh, electron static charge difference, uh, except in very few uh, examples. So actually, uh, just as mentioned by Professor Jiang this morning, uh, to innovate, you should learn from nature. Actually, by our uh, membranes, are very fantastic because the biomembranes provide original inspiration for the uh, memory chemists because of the uh, responsive channel across the memory. So if we simplify the channel across the memory, we can say it is a stimuli responsive gating uh, <coughs> memory the channel can close or open as wish. So, by inspired by this phenomenon, we can... We can design the uh, uh, artificial membrane by uh, immobilizing some responsive polymer into pores. So, that's... That kind of uh, memory we call that gating memory because the gate can open or close just on demand. So that uh, 
gate can be pH responsive, some responsive, light responsive, and so on. So that that uh, gate are uh, usually uh, res uh, uh, made of uh, responsive polymers. So with that kind of gate, the uh, permeability can be adjusted just responding to the environmental stimuli, for example, temperature, pH, and some other substance. So the membrane, uh, the, the permeability can be self-regulated by environmental stimuli. <laughs> and uh, the stimuli could be a temperature, pH, some substance concentration, or some special molecules. And the second membrane, if we prepare that membrane as flat or hollow fiber, we use that for separation. However, if we prepare that with a uh, uh, microscopic shape, we can use that for controlling needs. So I'm going to introduce the membranes for separation and the controlling needs uh, individually. So the membrane can be used to adjust the hydraulic permeability just by adjusting the environmental uh, stimuli or, uh, or affected by the environmental stimuli. Uh, for example, if we want to uh, decrease permeability, we just apply uh, or, or, or uh, release a uh, temp uh, temperature or decrease or increase the temperature or just affected by the pH change. So this kind of uh, memory can be applied to, uh, for example, the acetyl fermentation. Because the acetyl fermentation is uh, affected by the concentration of the uh, uh, acetyl inside. So if the acetyl, uh, the, 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 the acetyl concentration is too high, the reaction rate will be decreased. So, we use a membrane to remove the acyl continuously. However, if we use the, the membrane, the commercialized membrane, the acyl concentration inside the tank cannot be, con cannot be maintained constantly. So if we use uh, some uh, uh, acyl responsive membrane, when the acyl concentration increases to a critical concentration, the permeability will increase. That means we can uh, use such kind of membrane to maintain the acyl concentration as a constant concentration inside the, the tank. And also, we can use this kind of membrane for separation of uh, uh, particles or molecules with different sizes just by adjusting the uh, open and close uh, uh, status of the gate. And also, we can use that for some uh, uh, house gas molecules uh, sep uh, regulation separation. Uh, uh, usually, this kind of membrane can be used to uh, used to separate uh, some molecules. But when the when the uh, gas molecules are, are, are captured by the host molecules, it's difficult to wash out wash away this kind of uh, uh, com uh, complex complex uh, uh, hot, uh, gas molecules. So uh, the, the, the advantage is high selectivity, but the disadvantage is, uh, diffi is difficult to, to, to remove the captured uh, gas molecules. So if we apply a smart responsive membrane uh, with uh, adding a thermal responsive polymer uh, as a, as a uh, 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 chain to adjust the host gas complexation constant, then we can easily to adjust the complexation and decomplexation. That means when we uh, want to separate the, the molecules, we operate at low temperature, the, com uh, the complexation constant is very high, so it can be easily captured. After that, if you want to just uh, wash the membrane, we can just increase temperature and then the constant will decrease because uh, this polymer uh, become kind of phobic. 
and adjust the uh, complexation constant to decrease the complex uh, complexation constant. So this is the result. We can say if we use this uh, uh, some response to the polynomial, the de uh, decomplexation ratio just by one wash can be about 8%. If we do not use it, uh, some response uh, polymer, the uh, decomplexation ratio is just 20%. So that would be very uh, efficient. And uh, uh, use the hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, characteristic of the uh, uh, polymer brush and the, and the uh, uh, memory pores, we can use that for separate of uh, 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 proteins. And uh, when we want to uh, absorb the protein, we just operate at a higher temperature. When we want to, de uh, 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 want to uh, remove that, we just decrease the temperature. And uh, I want to introduce another uh, uh, work with memory to remove need ions. Actually, maybe you know, uh, in 2016, in the American, uh, in Michigan State, there is a very serious splint wall crisis. Maybe you have heard of that. Uh, about uh, 80 million people are affected by drinking water because the uh, need ion concentration is higher on the on standard in the drink of water. So this, this event is very uh, uh, serious in the, in the States. Uh, and uh, the Times reports this, uh, this crisis as a cover story. Actually, not, not, only, not only Michigan, but also a lot of, a lot of large cities, you can see, uh, waste investigation. Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, the need ion concentration is much higher than standard. That's a problem, actually. So why such kind of problems happened in the US States, which they call themselves the number one developed country in the world? That's because the actually need ion concentration standard is very low, you can see. For drinking water, is 10 to the minus 8. China, Europe, the same, and the United States, a little bit higher, but still 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus, uh, 10 to the minus, uh, power, uh, minus 10, minus 8. So it's very difficult to measure, and because it, it has no color, no, uh, it's not smelling. So you, can, you, 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 you cannot see any level in, inside the water. You have to measure that with some professional instrument. So that's difficult for the common people to know how much or how many needles in the drinking water. So we developed a membrane for removing needles uh, with a, a hot gas system to capture the needle. Because we use a, a corn ether as the hot molecules because the uh, chrome ether can uh, capture the lead ion uh, specifically. So we use this membrane to capture the lead ion. And also, when the uh, lead ion uh, appears, the gate will close. That means if the uh, water system uh, are polluted by lead ions, the water cannot pass through the memory. So in that case, we can protect people by using such kind of memory. And also, at the same time, if we want to reuse the memory, we can also adjust the temperature to uh, wash away the uh, need ions and reuse it again. So this is the process that we prepare the memory. I will not introduce uh, in details. And uh, this is the uh, result. We can see uh, the permeability change very, uh, very significant. 
you can see the membrane respond to the needle arm very fast, just within one or two minutes, the flux will decrease very fast. So that means the membrane pore size decreases very fast. And by uh, using this kind of uh, concept, we also developed an uh, uh, online detection uh, device, microchip, which, which we call that. We prepare a microgel inside the channel. So this microgel is prepared of uh, some responsive membrane, which composed of uh, polynipon and uh, uh, chlorinesin, which can specifically uh, specifically, uh, specifically uh, uh, capture the needle ion. So when we operate the, the, the chip at this temperature, when the uh, microgel capture the needle ions, it was isothermally, isothermally increase uh, the, 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 the volume. That means it was swell. So that means when it localized needle ions will swell, then the flux will, drop, will, will get down very fast. You can see with this chip, we can uh, detect even uh, the, the needle ion as low as 10 to minus 10. Very fast, just within about two minutes, we can detect, we can uh, get feedback. If the concentration is higher, we can get it much faster. And we can detect the needle ion by this simple and online uh, device uh, just by uh, uh, monitoring the change of uh, flux. So this is uh, the, 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 the system. Actually, we can send the, 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 inform, the information, need out information to our cell phone. So uh, we can monitor the water quality, uh, especially the need out concentration, just by our cell phone. And uh, uh, one way want to remove the need ions from the memory, uh, we can, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this is the uh, effect of the uh, the, the some other uh, ions. You can see the needle ion is very specific in uh, capture. When we uh, want to re want to remove the needle ion from the system, we, we just increase them. So this is a cartoon uh, to show uh, our memory pores or the uh, channel pores. We have. Uh, 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 some response in polymer and uh, on, on which we have some uh, host molecules as the, 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 the uh, capture uh, to, to capture the needle. When the needle appears, the membrane pores are closed and uh, protect the uh, what quality. Okay, then I will introduce some membranes for controlling needs. Okay, uh, uh, for controlling needs, uh, I think now particles is uh, a very useful uh, carrier for uh, drug delivery. However, for this kind of particles, the, uh, the release of the drug from the particles are uh, driven by uh, uh, diffusion, concentration driven diffusion. So in that case, when the, the drugs are intaken inside the body, the diffusion starts. And the, uh, in that case, a lot of harmful by effects happen inside the body. However, when the particles arrive to the, the tissue that uh, uh, drugs are needed, the, maybe the, the diffusion gets slow. So that's a problem. So the low efficiency and harmful by effect. So for a membrane community, we can do a thing, just prepare a capsule with some uh, bit. The capsule can encapsulate drugs inside, and we fabricate a lot of kind of uh, smart gating on the on the on the web capsules. So when we want to release drug, we uh, apply a slip line 
uh, stimulus to let the gates open. Otherwise, we let it uh, close so that uh, we can encapsulate or keep the drug inside if we do not want to release. If we want to release, we just uh, uh, make it open. So that's a uh, uh, movie with this kind of a mechanism. Uh, up to now, we can uh, fabricate a lot of kind of uh, stimuli responsive gate, for example, uh, as mentioned before, uh, soma responsive, cage responsive, glucose responsive, and also ionic responsive, or some specific uh, molecular responsive one. So this is a, a, a demonstration of the soma responsive uh, by capsule with some responsive uh, gate. We use a very simple uh, or famous uh, some responsive polymer, that's polynipon. We achieve uh, this kind of concept, concept. And then we investigated the, the, the uh, grafting yields and the control release uh, uh, performance. We can achieve positive uh, model. That means in, when we increase temperature, the drugs in, uh, release. And also we can achieve a kind of negative uh, model. That means when we decrease the temperature, we can let the drugs release. Uh, because the docs told us, when, we, when you increase temperature, maybe uh, it's harmful for some uh, tissue. So uh, this might be useful for some other uh, cases. And we uh, can uh, make a pH responsive system with a gate and a, a micro pump inside. In that case, when the pH change, that, mean, um, that means, for example, arrive, the, the drug carrier arrive to the tissue uh, site, the pH will decrease uh, from normal uh, to the uh, uh, normal pH uh, value. So when this kind of uh, uh, carrier recognizes the uh, pH change, the, the gate will open and, the, and then the micro pump will uh, swell and pump out the, the drugs. So the response rate will be uh, much larger. And uh, we can also prepare uh, glucose concentration responsive wood. That, uh, because nowadays, you know, diabetes is a very uh, uh, serious uh, disease in the world. A lot of people have to inject uh, insulin uh, 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 regularly. So uh, people are thinking some methods to release insulin by responding to the glucose concentration uh, change inside the body. So we can prepare a kind of membrane just by uh, walking a pH responsive chain and immobilize uh, glucose ox oxidized uh, uh, enzyme. So in that case, when the glucose concentration increase, the glucose can be uh, reacted to gluco uh, glucosic acid. So then the pH will change then the pores can open. When the glucose concentration decreases to some extent, the pH will increase uh, again and the, the pores will close again. So the glucose concentration can be maintained in between the higher one and the normal. So uh, that might be a, a useful method for the uh, glucose response uh, the, uh, release of uh, insulin. And then we uh, prepare the kind of ion uh, concentration uh, responsive one. As, as you know, the potassium ion is very, uh, very special inside the body because you know, inside the cells, the concentration is 150 uh, uh, micromolar. Uh, However, outside the, uh, the cells, it's just five uh, micromolar. Uh, so, if 
the tissue or the ion pump uh, doesn't work well. So the, the potassium ion will be, uh, the, the concentration of potassium ion will increase uh, abnormally. So we prepared uh, potassium ion uh, responsive polymer uh, by co polymerizing this uh, coins with uh, a similar responsive polymer. So this one, uh, this polymer is uh, developed for the first time by our group. We use this uh, polymer to prepare the control system by just localizing uh, abnormal increasing of uh, potassium ion. Uh, you can see other ions cannot trade this uh, remedies, but potassium ion can specifically trade the open of these four sides. And for, uh, for controlling these, uh, the doctors told us uh, you'd better make uh, uh, multiple responsive ones because uh, usually if you want to prepare multiple uh, responsive ones, the doctor can adjust uh, for, for, for uh, several uh, uses. So we use microfluidics to prepare a kind of microcapsule by incorporating uh, super uh, para paramagnetic uh, level particles and uh, some responsive level gels inside the pH responsive microcapsule. In that case, the carrier can respond to magnetic field uh, for targeting and also for localizing the pH change at uh, tumor issue. And uh, if the release rate is not enough, the doctor can increase the temperature of that side then the release rate will be in enhanced further. Okay, uh, the last one I will introduce briefly about the fabrication of smart membranes. For smart membranes, uh, I think not a method, but they can be some uh, classified into two main methods. One is introducing responsive domains after membrane formation. That means we prepare a porous membrane first and then graft uh, polymers or uh, microspheres onto the, the pores. But this uh, method is, uh, uh, there is an uh, inherent conflict between the flux and the flux support. That means if we uh, graft too many uh, responsive domains, the flux will decrease uh, very, very significantly all of the responsive property is good. And also it's a little bit uh, difficult to be scaled up because it, it needs two, uh, needs two steps. So another one is introducing responsive domains during membrane formation. That means when we prepare the membrane, we just put, uh, for example, blood polymers uh, inside or microspheres inside to prepare the membrane at the same, at the same time. So, this method now uh, uh, is easy to be scaled up because we can use that for uh, with uh, uh, commercially uh, existed uh, instrument to prepare the memory just by adding some additives. However, nowadays all of, almost all of the process to prepare the memory is mixed. That means liquid induced phase separation. But the, the process is very fast, with maybe with, within uh, one or two minutes, and um, two, two, two seconds, within one second. So it's very hard to achieve such kind of, we, we draw it at, at the perfect structure. However, when we prepare the memory, maybe this, these brushes cannot move to the surface of this memory pores, because too, the memory form formed too fast. And up to now, by this kind of method, the, the either responsive property or the flux is limited. So that's a problem. That's why all the smart membranes are uh, uh, very fantastic, very interesting, and uh, we think are very attractive, but not as nearly applied in the industry. So the fabrication method might be a, 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 a key issue to be solved. So, still a very big challenge to fabricate such kind of membrane with high flux 
significant response and good mechanical strength at the same time by simple method. So recently we developed a, a, a method to prepare a membrane. Uh, we think it's uh, uh, very easy. We just add some never gels into the membrane formation solution and use vapor induced phase separation. During vapor induced uh, phase separation, the metal particles will be moved will move to the interface and be captured by, by the interface energy. Then they will not they cannot leave again. By this kind of uh, uh, method, we can prepare such kind of uh, structure. That means the the gate. The, the memory gates are 3D inter uh, in interconnected uh, 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 structures inside the memory. So this is the nanogels, uh, and then the membranes. We uh, we investigate the, the uh, exposure to time, uh, and the exposure to time affects the the memory structure very uh, various. Uh, uh, significantly. So this is a cartoon to show the exposure time, how the exposure time to uh, affect the uh, structure of the memory. For example, uh, if we do not use social to the, to the vapor, the structure is like this, the, the much there may be just in, embedded inside the memory uh, mattress. However, when we increase the exposure time, you can see the, the the pipe will move to the interface and the structure will, will change. And finally, they move uh, uh, to, to the interface and uh, be captured at the interface and uh, form a uh, cellular like uh, structure. So, this is the memory. You can see we also adjust the, the content of the micro nanogels. You can see by increasing the nanogels, the memory becomes more porous and more uh, the pores are more inter uh, interconnected. And uh, this is the, the plus change. You can see they're uh, responsive, uh, uh, and uh, the responsive rate is also very good. And by this method, here is the result. We can see the flux. This is the responsive factor. This memory. Uh, better than uh, ever existed ones, including ours uh, uh, prepared before. And uh, the, the particles are very stable on the uh, interface, because uh, actually the, during the fabrication, the, okay, very fast, well, well very soon. <laughs> uh, because the nanogels are, cap are captured by the energy well, and then uh, when the memory formation, uh, the, the particles are fixed at the interface. Uh, uh, additional point is that we find the mechanical stress is uh, better than uh, prepared by this. Okay, this is a short sum summary of this work. Large flux, responsive, and then uh, I gave a short summary on the afternoon. Uh, if you are interested in by our work, you can uh, read this book. We published in 2011, uh, Smart Memory Materials and System. And recently, we also uh, published a short uh, uh, summary uh, of our work, Cerebral uh, Response to Smart Gating Memory in uh, CSR. Uh, if you don't want to read the book, that's too, 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 too thick. So you can read the short paper. And uh, actually, in this field, we still have a lot of things to do. I think uh, a lot of uh, uh, applications are still there. Uh, this is not a perspective, just as mentioned by Dr. Uh, Jiang. If you want to innovate, learn from nature. Actually, for for membrane uh, committee, we know the IO membranes are inspired by key planets, right? So now the our membranes are applied all over the world. That's a big technology. So now by inspired by the smart fire membranes, I believe a lot of normal functional membranes will be uh, realized or achieved in the future. So for sure, I think 
the membrane walls will become better and better. So, uh, but, uh, taking this chance, I'd like to thank uh, the Institute gave me money to do research and thank my uh, group members for their hard work. Finally, I have two slides. Uh, uh, I'm very honored to take this opportunity to, to, to introduce uh, the next conference on bioinspired materials and membranes, uh, 2020, will be held in Sichuan, China. Sichuan, China is the hometown of Jiang Panda. <laughs> so if you, you cannot remember Sichuan, because I know it's very difficult to pronounce. So you just can ask any Chinese people, where is the hometown Panda? They will tell you that's Sichuan. So I hope I hope to see you in Sichuan in 2020. I will uh, present more about uh, Sichuan uh, tomorrow uh, during the closing ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for an inspiring talk. Um, do we have any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, question. Uh, you mean, yeah. Okay. Usually, for uh, leaves, that means uh, liquid in your space separation. Uh, the finger-like uh, finger-like shape just like the, we have a, a large pore just uh, under the functional surface. That's the finger-like finger-like pore structure. Here. But the exposure time, in what is exposure time? Exposure time, that means uh, we put the uh, casting solution in the vapor uh, vacuum. Not vacuum, vapor uh, cham uh, chamber. Yeah. We put that for different time period. And then we, uh, after we exposure the uh, casting solution, we put that solution into the liquid. That's the time means uh, in between uh, casting and uh, put that uh, uh, put that into the uh, uh, ions, uh, the, 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 the non solvent. Yes, thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? Okay, I'll take this opportunity to give you a little present. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all.